my name is Maria Belenke. I'm here at the ISU Fruit and Vegetable Virtual Field Day. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about this um, summer cover crop trial that I've been working on. Um, this is in its uh, second its second year. Uh, we did we started this in 2019. Um, we're evaluating different cover crops for their benefits to uh, fall vegetable production. These eight summer cover crops um, were chosen for um, their ability to grow really fast um, in the heat and produce a lot of biomass. And we're evaluating them for things like weed suppression and addition of carbon, um, nitrogen uh, mineralization, and their effects on yield and quality of cabbage and beets. So the first cover crop we have here, this is sorghum sedan grass. Looks like corn, but um, it's not corn, and it, but it also does really well um, in the heat and the humidity. Um, one benefit or a couple benefits of it is that it grows really fast um, in these hot temperatures and produces a lot of biomass. And it also has um, an allelopathic effect on germinating weed seeds. So it can prevent weed seeds from germinating um, this chemical called sorgoleone. So which it can be a really good benefit when trying to um, suppress weeds. But something I guess to watch out for would be it could potentially also suppress germinating vegetable seeds, which is not something we want. So all the cover crops were seeded on June 16th and we're actually going to be terminating them today. It's August 4th. And uh, the seeding rate for the sorghum sudan grass was 55 pounds per acre. So you can see that the sorghum sudan grass is doing um, a really good job of suppressing weeds, produced a lot of biomass and there's not much, not much else growing besides the sorghum. Okay, this is our next cover crop. This is, um, this is brown top millet. It does really well um, as a soil stabilizer because it has a really dense uh, fibrous root system that's really concentrated in the top two feet of the soil. And it's also doing a really good job of weed suppression here another potentially good option for weed suppression. And this brown top millet was seeded at 33 pounds per acre. This is one of our legume cover crops. This is cow pea. It's hard to see it in here. It didn't do very well for weed suppression, but you can see it here on the edges. Um, it, but it does produce a large, uh, large amount of nitrogen, and it can it can produce up to uh, 130 pounds of nitrogen um, for the following crop. It, but at the same time, it's not doing a very good job of weed suppression, but potentially could do well um, as a companion crop in another um, in a cover crop mixture like sorghum sudan grass or brown top millet. And the seeding rate was 110 pounds per acre. So this is uh, another one of our legume cover crops in the trial. This is sun hemp. Um, it was seeded at 38 pounds per acre. Um, it, it's another legume and so it can produce uh, nitrogen for the following crop. It is interesting. It looks a little bit like water hemp, but you can see this one's the sun hemp and this is the water hemp. Um, it does really well in, in the hot, humid conditions and can grow rapidly and produce uh, a lot of biomass in as little as 45 days. This is golden flax. Um, this was seeded at 77 pounds per acre. A um, couple interesting things about it. It has these really um, beautiful purple flowers that bloom for, for from two to four weeks. So it could be really good um, for attracting beneficial insects. Um, and pollinators. The other thing is that it tends to have, it can have a low uh, carbon to nitrogen ratio, so it has the potential to be used as a um, green manure, so um, basically growing it for a short amount of time and tilling it in um, and pro providing additions of organic matter as well as nitrogen. So this is TEF. This was seeded at a rate of eight pounds per acre. Um, it's not 
hasn't been uh, researched widely as a cover crop, but has been used as a forage. Um, it is native to the Ethiopian highlands, so it's really drought tolerant, um, grows really rapidly, um, rapidly in the heat, provides a really thick, thick, dense cover, um, and is really doing a good job for weed suppression. Also, I've seen this being used um, on farms between plastic rows of summer vegetable crops like tomatoes. Um, and it seems to be doing uh, a good job for uh, suppressing weeds in those situations. So this is the last of the legumes in our trial. This is mung bean. Um, it hasn't been widely researched as a cover crop before, but it is really heat tolerant and it's able to be gr grown over a wide range of pH from 4.5 to 7.5. Um, we've seeded it at a rate of 44 pounds per acre, uh, but you can see it's not doing a great job um, for weed suppression, similar to the cow pea, um, but a little bit different than the cow pea is these um, kind of bigger leaves. It's more, it looks more like a soybean with the, the hairier um, leaves. Um, where the cow pea was more smooth uh, and shiny and with smaller leaves. All right, this is the last cover crop in our trial. This is buckwheat. Um, this, you know, you can see that it produces a lot, uh, a lot of biomass and it also grows in a really short amount of time. This was seeded at 110 pounds per acre. Uh, it's good for attracting beneficials. You can, I don't know if you can see it here, but it, there's covered in honeybees. Um, one challenge with it if, is if you don't terminate it within um, 7 to 14 days of flowering, it will reseed. So a few preliminary results from our 2019 season. A couple of them would be as, or as we expected where with the legume cover crops, we had um, higher levels of nitrate in our uh, soil, soil samples at the end of the season. We also found that the cabbage uh, marketable yields were higher under those legume cover crops. The, the crops of sun hemp, teff, buckwheat and, um, produced the highest amount of, of biomass and also did the best with weed suppression. But we did see that yields were much lower in things like sorghum, sudan grass and, and sun hemp. And I think a lot of this was due to the very high uh, carbon to nitrogen uh, ratio of these cover crops, some as high as 60 to one, which means that oftentimes cover crops that have a carbon to nitrogen ratio of 20 to one or higher are going to cause um, nitrogen to be immobilized and, um, or nitrogen drag and is not available then for the, the following uh, crop. And I think that's might be uh, what we were seeing um, with those. Um, and that's just, uh, just a few preliminary results from 2019. I think we'll see very similar results. Um, you can see just by looking at the field, the, you know, like the buckwheat, the sun hemp, the teff, sorghum sudan grass produce a lot of uh, good biomass and weed suppression. Um, this, these crops, this plot is basically the same as it was last year, so all the same cover crops are being grown um, on the same plots they were last year. So the weeds that went to seed um, are increasing the weed seed bank in those plots. Consequently, the ones that did not go to seed um, were probably um, reduced the weed seed bank and um, are providing better weed suppression, so kind of an additive an additive effect over these last couple years. So I think we'll see very similar, similar, similar results as in 2019. And yeah, so with, with cover crops, you know, you have to continue to, to plant them the same as you would, you know, any other tool that you would use for managing weeds. You don't just do it one season um, and then stop. You continue to do it over and over and then you know you can continue to uh, deplete the weed seed bank in that way by not letting weed seeds go go to seed.